Welcome to today's video. I'm Rick Chapo with DMCAAgentService.com. So today we're taking a look at a fairly straightforward subject, how to avoid DMCA complaints. Uh, and uh, the thing to understand is, well, the DMCA is a federal law. It's been in existence since 1998, and it deals with online uh, copyright situations. One of the fundamental aspects of this law is Section 512. And it says uh, that a, a website or an app or any internet connected uh, service cannot be held liable for copyright infringement based on content uploaded by a user. So uh, a video such as this is one that I'm creating and I'm uploading it to YouTube. And so if there's something in this video that constitutes copyright infringement, YouTube cannot be held liable for it, but I can because I'm the one that created it, I'm the user. And so that's a key aspect of the law, it's Section 512, uh, and it's user-generated content. The DMCA only applies to user-generated content. So if you were to get rid of user-generated content on your platform, uh, whether it be a website or an app, then uh, you would avoid DMCA complaints because there's simply nothing there for anybody to complain about. Now, how realistic is that? Well, you'd be surprised. It may sound like a crazy notion at first, but we're starting to see some interesting developments online. Uh, and specifically, companies are looking at their overall platform and trying to decide you know, whether to continue certain interactive aspects. So ESPN, probably the biggest sports site in the world, uh, if not, certainly right there. Um, you know, They have a comment section for all their articles and videos. And with what seems to be any site these days, if you would go into those comments areas and read some of the uh, uh, narratives put forth, wow, just some nasty stuff. Really, really nasty. And that seems to be the case you know, all over the web these days. There are just a lot of unhappy people out there. Uh, and you give them a little anonymity and suddenly people are saying some really horrible things. Uh, and so ESPN decided to terminate their comment section, not so much from a copyright perspective, but simply from defamation. And I imagine they got tired of reading nasty comments and uh, people being mean to each other. Uh, they're not the only company to have done this. Vice, Vice is a very popular website, and they actually have a number of different websites. And one's called Motherboard that deals with you know, emerging tech and Internet issues. And you would imagine how fired up could people possibly get about those subjects? Well, you would go read their comments area and it would just be nasty, nasty, nasty. Uh, and so they also got rid of their comments section. And they actually published a letter basically saying, look, you people are horrible. <laughs> What's wrong with you? We're not dealing with this anymore. <laughs> And so on and so forth. Uh, and so, you know, those situations weren't necessarily DMCA oriented, uh, but they represent uh, a change in uh, the standard operating procedure that you see online. Uh, companies are becoming more picky, I would say, about, you know, when they're going to allow users to uh, interact with their platforms and not just because um, there's liability issues uh, and there's also just the practical uh, effect over time of having to, you know, read some of that crap. Uh, so what about copyright specifically? Well, there are also some cases that have come down uh, that have caused some concern. The immunity uh, safe harbor provisions have been pierced a couple of times and in strange ways. Perhaps the most important case in this area um, is Mavericks versus Live Journal. It's a 2017 decision by the Ninth uh, District, which is a federal court, it covers California and a couple other states. And um, this court is known for rendering some odd decisions, and this one certainly qualified. So the interesting thing about the DMCA is it applies to content uploaded by users. So what happens if a website is involved in the creation and upload of that content? What if Mark Zuckerberg, you know, uploads uh, something to his Facebook page that constitutes copyright infringement? Can Facebook, um, you know, still maintain the DMCA safe harbor immunity? And the answer is no, because he's an employee. He's somebody who's working on behalf of Facebook. He uploaded it. Uh, that's not an independent user. So in Mavericks versus LiveJournal, the situation was LiveJournal had volunteer moderators. And the way the system apparently worked was that people would upload content to LiveJournal and it would go into a hold. And then the moderators would look at it and decide if uh, they would allow it to be uploaded and published on the site or not. This seems like a pretty reasonable approach. What they were essentially doing was trying to cut out some of the nasty stuff or the stuff that was obviously copyright infringement, things of that sort. 
And so you would hope that they wouldn't be pub- uh, punished for that. But the Ninth, C- the Ninth Circuit <laughs> had other ideas. And the Ninth Circuit said essentially the fact that the moderators uh, were working on behalf of Live LiveJournal, even though they weren't paid, even though they weren't employees, uh, meant that Live Journal. there was a question of fact as to whether Live Journal was part of the um, – uh, you know, the upload process, part of the, the creation and upload process, which would essentially waive the safe harbor uh, provisions of the DMCA. And then they sent it back down to court, uh, to the trial court to have that addressed. It's a terrible decision, a horrible decision. Uh, the Ninth Circuit, again, they, they render some just bizarre decisions. This is one where they clearly didn't think the process through. It's just, just mind-bogglingly terrible. Because think about what's happening here. Live journals voluntarily you know, going in and trying to uh, limit, you know, uh, the upload of copyright infringing materials of, you know, racist, nasty stuff. And if we follow uh, the Ninth Circuit's reasoning uh, to its logical end, the thing that LiveJournal would need to do would be to fire its moderators and let people just upload whatever and then wait for complaints to come in and go in and try and fix it then. Because at that point, they wouldn't be involved in the upload process, and therefore they wouldn't waive uh, Section 512 of the DMCA. It's just it's the judges should have been slapped upside the head. I mean, seriously, terrible decision. Uh, but it is what it is. So if you're using moderators, you have a form, you have something where you're having people screen or filter you know, content being uploaded, well, <laughs> you might want to review that policy, unfortunately. Now, this is only a decision in the Ninth uh, Circuit. Uh, other circuit courts haven't followed it as far as I know, but it's, yeah, it's not great. Uh, and so forth. How to avoid DMCA complaints. How realistic is it that you're going to get rid of the interactivity, uh, you know, of your platform, your online platform? You know, I, you're, ha- you're going to have to look at it at a case-by-case basis, looking at your own specific, you know, offerings. But to me... I think most people these days expect to interact with, you know, apps and, and websites and things of that sort, even if it's just leaving comments or reviews or, you know, whatever it may be. If, you know, if you have a system where they can upload content, they're used to doing that an Instagram, uh, you know, Facebook or whatever. And then suddenly you tell them that they can't. Yeah, it's probably not going to do well for your bottom line. <laughs> I can see it uh, being a real business killer. Um, so, you know, how to avoid DMCA complaints? Well, the simple answer is you get rid of all user generated content. You don't let visitors upload anything to your site. Uh, is that realistic? Yeah, for some sites maybe, but for most, I would think not. And in that case, then you're just going to have to go ahead and comply with the DMCA. It's not that difficult, it's not expensive. Um, if you do it all yourself, it costs six bucks. Um, that's the filing fee for agents with the D- uh, with the copyright office. If you use an independent third party service as your agent, like ourselves, DMCAAgentService.com, you know, that's 70 bucks and we cover the $6 fee because, uh, you know, we're second coming of Mother Teresa. Uh, so we're talking about low capital cost on your part. You do have to learn the compliance process, but again, that's not that difficult. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, there are millions and millions of DMCA complaints filed every day and the vast, vast, vast majority of them, you know, are resolved through the compliance process and don't turn into lawsuits. So, uh, you know, no matter how worried you are potentially about, uh, you know, complaints, you know, again, there, there are things that you can deal with them. Um, the process, in fact, all DMCA is set up to deal with them. So, uh, you know, I'd encourage you to at least investigate it and see if it's something you can handle. So that is it for today's video. Um, We will be publishing all kinds of videos on the DMCA, so I hope you consider subscribing to our channel. And thanks for watching.